Today on this beautiful Michigan day, we are going to change out the cooler lines, the transmission cooler lines on this 2007 Malibu Max. It's a 3.5 liter engine, LZ4. It has the AT45E transmission. We know these cooler lines are leaking because we're starting to find drops. Under where the radiator sits, right there. Especially when the transmission is warm, this fluid is thin. Start to find it on the floor like this. Now it can't be the radiator leaking because this car has a transmission cooler built into the engine's coolant radiator, like most cars have these days. So if the cooler is leaking internally, uh, you won't find that transmission fluid on the ground. You'll find it in the engine's coolant. So if you're finding transmission oil under the radiator, it can only be coming from that transmission line. And this is a Michigan car, so this is kind of a kind of a Rust Belt special. These lines shouldn't really fail traditionally, but they don't have much of a coating on them and they just go bad. So to start, we're gonna pop the hood and remove a few things up top. We wanna to get to that transmission cooler line going into the top of the radiator. It's gonna be easier to get to it by removing this engine air pipe. I prefer to remove more parts in order to get to the things easier because I'm not in a rush. You know, I, I enjoy working on cars. I try not to make it a pain for myself. So let's remove this hose first. It looks to me, there's another hose clamp over here. Uh, we've got this guy here. I might be able to just detach it there and swing it up. Let's see, I'm not sure. Didn't mean to remove it that far. Whatever. Everything gets harder with one hand. See if this is gonna play nice. Got that apart. Now we're gonna come over here. I'm gonna take this bolt out, which holds that line up. Oops. The hose, I mean. loose there now. I'm going to take this hose clamp out. Probably going to have to remove the cover to do it. Tucked in here tight, jeez. I need a work cart. Alright, I'm gonna take this guy out now. I'm not, oops, sorry. Jeez, I'm not used to holding the camera like this. Alright. The PCV? I'm not sure what this is. I think so. It's gonna have some kind of special clip. Okay, no problem. You're just gonna pull this little tab over, little green tab, and pull it up. Now, let's see if we can get it out or if there's any other hidden connectors here. Okay, now we can move that out of the way completely. How's that throttle look? Alright, this is an electronic throttle car, which I used to hate, but I'm starting to prefer them now just because the system is so much simpler mechanically. Anyways, let's see if I can get the flash on here. There we go. Let's find that cooler line. There it is. It's going to be really hard to film. I just might not be able to do it. Um, if I can't, there are other videos online which show you how to get these GM lines out. 
So you're gonna pull this tab out, this black tab, which covers up the clip. Let's see if we can get in there and look at that condition. It's another benefit of using a camera. It's almost like having a scope, a boroscope. Jeez. There we are. So there's a little C clip in there you gotta get out. You can use a little pick to do it. Yeah, there's no way I'm gonna be able to film this. So let me give it a shot. Maybe we can film one of the other ones. All right, you can see what I did there. I used that pick and that groove to pull that tab out. I bet these are just devils when they spring out and you can't find them. I'm gonna try to grab it here. Okay. Now you see that black circle, or that, that clip, let's say this black clip was covering this up. So it couldn't pop out or protect it or something, I'm not sure. Anyways. <clears throat> Should be nothing else holding it in now. Should be able to. Whew. I don't know. Gonna have to play around with it. I gave up just trying to pull that line out of there. So instead, um, I'm loosening the fitting. You can get replacement fittings. I believe the O ring is in that fitting. If you need to replace the O ring, you'll have to replace that. Anyways. So. It's a 19, and I've just been loosening it one turn at a time. You can get a wrench in there just. So we're gonna just keep it going here. Okay, nice, not much leakage. So I'm just gonna call this done. And when we get this line out of here, we'll decide if we want to place that fitting or not. Another thing you can do in a really a terrible scenario, really anytime you have a fitting on a line like this, go power fit and power steering or brakes, is if you feel like you're gonna strip this out, you can take a hacksaw or um, angle grinder or something and cut the line where it's still straight like this and then you can get a socket on this. And then you can impact it or put a wrench on it, whatever. Because you want to get as many sides on this hexagon as you can. If you're just putting a wrench on it, you only got two sides and you can strip that out. So if you can get a socket on there and just zip it off, you're good to go. The problem with that is, is uh, especially if this is down, you could be cutting at this and putting a bunch of metal flakes in the liquid that's then could be flowing into whatever it is you're working on. You don't want that. All right, anyways, now that we got that, we're gonna come over here. This seems kind of random, but it's part of the procedure. We're gonna check out this headlight assembly. Come on. Okay, I believe those are tens there. One hand. This is nothing like the later Malibus where changing a headlight is an all day job. So you're going to lift up on it, pull it out. That's the way it should be. Some of you know what I'm talking about. Same with the CTSs. All right, we're gonna disconnect our electrical connectors here. Let's see, where's our tab? Whoop, sorry. Try to look at the camera and this at the same time. Huh. Well, anyway, you're gonna disconnect those. I'll do it off camera. And then set this aside and we'll move on to the next thing. We're gonna remove the air deflector now. It looks like that. 
already took it out last week because I was trying to figure out what was going on with the uh, fluid leak. This thing was, was leaking bad enough that this thing was actually cooled up with transmission fluid. It kind of poured out as I lowered it. So the transmission fluid will leak onto this thing until it's overflowing and then it'll drip on the ground. To get that out, you've got a number of little tiny bolts. I think they're sevens or sixes, three of them. And then, that, not that, excuse me. And then you've got a couple of these push pins. So you're gonna pull out that little plunger first and then pop the pin out. These were not that difficult. Now we're gonna raise the vehicle up. Alright, now we're going to remove our deflectors. <clears throat> Take a look at that line too. Here it is. I mean, no question where that fluid's coming from. Yeah, nasty. Alright, so I have to decide if I actually want to do this or not. I'm going to remove this plastic deflector over here, this plastic deflector over here. Let me think about it. I'm not going to lie, that was, a, that was a hassle getting this thing out. Do it when you have a lot of patience. There's a lot of clips, a lot of them are very difficult to get to. Sure, you can just yank on it and get it out, but you may break some stuff. I didn't want to break anything. Let's take a look at where the clips are located. Uh, we'll start back here. Someone had zip tied this in, or zip tied something. There's a wire. I don't know. I gotta take a look. Anyways, I had to cut a zip tie. Uh, there's one clip there. There's a clip up there. There's a clip there. There was a clip right there. There's a big clip right there that's a plunger style. You gotta pull the center out. That was connected to some jug that's there. I'm not sure what that jug is. It's not washer fluid. Kinda had to move it out of the way. There's another, another clip here. There's another plunger style clip here. To pull the center out. There's another clip here. When I say clip, I mean the little Christmas trees. And this was the tricky part. There's a clip on the top that I struggled to get to. I think I ended up going through the radiator grill on the front. Same with this one. I believe this one went from the other side. I believe that's it. I also had to take out a few more of the bolts that hold on this deflector up here. That was easy, just three seven millimeter bolts and I pushed it to the side like that. The whole point of this is so that now we can get to that the other fitting right there. Might be able to do it from the other side. Not sure. 
And I'm gonna do it from this side. Let me get my tools. All right, we got it. See it there? And we're gonna pull our pick down and up. There we go. Uh, don't lose that. <sighs> there it is. I'm just going to leave that for now and I'm going to take care of the transmission lines on the transmission. There it is. I'm going to take that guy out. Put a drain pan under it. I'm gonna get my favorite drain pan. One of the best tools I've ever bought. It's not snap on. I think it's rubber made. Super helpful jobs where you just don't know where the mess is going to go. Like coolant. With this, you can just loosen things up, throw this under there, and let it go. That looks to be a 10 mil. Gosh, I wonder if I can get my gun in there. That'd be awfully convenient. now.
Okay, we got it. Let those lines drain out. I believe we got to get that uh, fitting on the other side. We also have to remove a clip. Uh, I know where the fluid's coming down, so I'm going to move this over there. Uh, not so dry anymore. Whatever. We need my 19 and some patience. <clears throat> we also got to remove it. From these clips here. I'm just gonna, yep, just gonna push them up, get them out of there. Not too difficult. I gotta get them out of here too. Wait, no, they're clipped together there. No, that's not a big deal. But this one. Okay, it's out of the clips. They're loose there. Ugh. Now we gotta get this sun done. Can this thing not focus in the cold or what? See, I got myself a line wrench. Let's see, where's the. There we go. These are good for avoiding stripping out fittings on lines. Well, you know what? You can try to pull it out first, because that is how that's supposed to work. Glove's not a really good glove anymore. Hot in Michigan. All right. There we go. Little fluid. There's our fitting. I guess that's where the O-ring is. It's probably one on the inside too. Let's see if we can get these lines out. I don't know how. Give him a good yank. 
Does not matter if you bend them. Being replaced. It's just a bunch of fuzziness. Come on, seriously? Gotta get a real camera. All right. Yeah, they're nasty, all right. Let's go look at the new ones. Here's our new lines. Got them on rockauto.com. The reason they're stuffed in this box like this is because I'm trying to get them into approximately the same shape that they will be on the vehicle. Because this uh, rubber hose here has to make this sharp bend on the car, and I think if I let it go straight and then I try to get them in there, it's going to be more difficult. So I'm going to get them kind of pre-bent here. They don't come with an O-ring or anything. Uh, it does come with a little black clip on both, as well as this little clip which holds them together. Now I went and got myself two new fittings. And these are the ones that go on the radiator side, top and bottom. It was in the auto parts store parts system with my vehicle, so it wasn't a hassle to find. They came with new retainer rings, thank goodness. And I will show you how to get these in correctly best I can. So these fittings already came with the retaining rings on there, which means you could just screw this onto the vehicle, onto the radiator, and uh, clip the line into it. You wouldn't have to do this, but in case you've taken this out and you're using the old fitting, I'll show you how to get it back in correctly. Do it patiently, if I can. You're gonna hook one into one of the holes, and then you're gonna skip the second, and kind of roll the whole thing. Sorry, this is terrible. Let's see if I can hold it with a pen. There we go. Now you can see the three ears are protruding in the center. That's what holds the line in. Now the reason I didn't just take it and jam it on like that is because um, it's not what you're supposed to do. <laughs> I'm not actually sure why you're not supposed to do that. I assume it just wouldn't go very well. So anyways, once it's like this, you can install it on the vehicle and it will clip onto the line. Again, quick connects, even though it says quick disconnect on the uh, on the fitting boxes. Not very quick to disconnect. Anyways, so then you're going to slot them in like that and give it some pressure and it'll clip right in. I'm not going to do it right now because I'm going to do it on the vehicle. I would also lube up the O-rings with a little bit of transmission fluid. There are two. There's one on the inside and there's one on the back here. That's another reason why you should replace these, is because you've got two O-rings here that could fail in the future. Especially pulling out those old lines with all that rust on it and that sort of thing. I'd hate to think that they were good before, but then I damaged them removing the old lines, and then I'm trying to put old lines in to these O-rings, or new lines into old O-rings that I just destroyed. And Then you've got to do this whole thing again. You don't want to do that. So now we're going to go back outside. We're going to put these on the radiator and move to the next step. New fittings are in, 
didn't tighten it very tight, just enough to uh, give that O-ring a tiny amount of pressure. They're a 19 millimeter. So our top one. Now I'm gonna go get the lines. Now the more eagle-eyed viewer may have noticed on the lines, on the transmission side, there is a little rubber spacer. It's sitting on the line itself. Now, if you're not careful, you may not realize that the old one was stuck on the transmission. So I just pulled it off. It was just kind of glued on there after all these years. Make sure you do that or else you'll be frustrated that you can't get your lines in. Uh, I think its purpose is to space the, uh, you can't see it if you recognize it, is to give the upper line some space because they do not go into the same trans they do not go into the transmission at the same depth. Want us to go a little further. All right, we're gonna slot this bottom radiator line in first. I dabbed it with a little fresh transmission fluid. You're gonna keep the black cap cap off of it at first. Now we're gonna slot the line in. Oops, don't use the black cap to press it in. Oops. I was expecting to say like a glove, but I guess not. It doesn't go in quite as easily as I thought. Maybe I got the wrong angle to it. Huh. Alright, to be continued. Well, I got it in with a not so satisfying click. Uh, I'm kind of a thud. I'm gonna get the camera in there and try to make sure I got it in. It appears so. It should make a nice click, but this one was snug. I put a little bit more transmission fluid on it. It eventually went in, but it wasn't easy. But I can't get it back out again, so it looks like it's probably good to go. Now we're going to go down to that end. Uh, we're going to get these in. Make sure these are lined up correctly. Oh yeah, we gotta get this guy on. Let's not forget. All right, that looks good. I may uh, go back and verify this later. Anyways, so we've gotta get this in there. We've got to get these over here. And then there's our lines with our black rubber on there. I'm probably going to lube these up a little bit before I get them in there. And then if that stud came out, make sure to put that stud in now. Mine didn't come out.
or they got the transmission side lines coated with a little trans fluid. And we're going to try to angle them in now. Get it over that stud. See what I mean about the sharp angle on the tubes? Nice to have them a little pre-bent. Appears to be in. No satisfying clicks or anything. These aren't quick connects, these are just held on by this clamp here. The torque for that is very light. There's probably some O-rings in here too. Would have been good to replace those. I didn't see anything online about it. Kind of disappointing. This is actually the next day. It's just as lovely as it was yesterday. In fact, a little icier today. Typical Michigan day. You can see the water draining down the ice and the trees. Lovely. Okay, what's next? I just want to make a quick comment about these GM lines here. Some of you who are really eagle-eyed and have done these GM lines before may have noticed that the line going into the bottom of the radiator that I installed earlier may not have been completely installed just by the fact that the C-clip going into the fitting wasn't completely flush. Now with this one, I took this picture of the line going into the top of the radiator and you can see that the C-clip is almost completely flush against the fitting. Almost. It should be completely flush. But boy, I uh, I pressed and pressed and pressed on these things and I couldn't get them to, I couldn't get that C-clip to look completely flush. And that's because the C-clip is going over a ridge that's molded into the line. And once it goes over that ridge, it should snap down, make a little click. Unfortunately, in reality, it didn't really happen with either line. I think my mistake was I took these nice fresh fittings with those fresh O-rings and installed them right onto the radiator and then expected those lines to just snap in when in reality uh, it just didn't happen. They were they were too snug and I fought and fought with them and I couldn't get them installed. So I personally recommend taking these fittings and installing them on the lines outside of the engine bay first and then trying to come in here and then just screwing them into the radiator. And you're going to be twisting that O-ring inside the fitting when you do that. But I would lube it up really well. If, and if someone doesn't agree with this, I, I'd love to hear their thoughts. I just haven't really done these GM lines a lot. I found it to be kind of a frustrating process, especially with all the rust uh, being here in Michigan and that sort of thing. So love to know your thoughts. Feel free to comment below. At this point, I've put both of the shields back on the bottom. Both the one that's on the right side of the vehicle and also the shield under the radiator right there. 
like I said, it's just some push pins and some seven millimeter bolts. This one was the, the big job, it took a little bit, but eventually I found all the slots for the pins and got that put together. Uh, again, I don't really think you have to take that out. It gave better access to the line on this side. But if your line isn't giving you a lot of trouble, you might be able to pull it out from this side instead of doing it from over here. All right, so the vehicle's on the ground now. I've buttoned up the top line. It's a little easier to get to. And now I'm gonna put the headlight back in. Put our one connector on there. Always be sure to hold on to bolts tightly when moving them. Mm. Now we're going to get our airline back in here. angle this for a few minutes. Got both clamps tightened up. Put our hose back in. Just getting our last bolt here. In case you're tempted to clean that throttle body while the air tube is off, make sure it is depowered first. It's a rule of thumb. If the throttle body is electronic, keep your fingers away from the blades. Some of them have ice breaking policies. So not policies. Um. Got our air tube buttoned up. Tighten both clamps. Put our little tube back on. Tightened our one tube holder bracket thing. And as a rule of thumb, Keep your fingers away from the blades of these electronic throttle bodies in case you're tempted to go in there and clean it while this tube is off. Some of them, while they're sitting, even with the key out, will do a snap throttle to break ice off of them. And they'll go whap real quick and they can take off part of your finger. It's something to know about new cars. All right, I'm trying to think if there's anything else in here. I think we're ready to put this cover back on. I have a check engine light. I wonder why. Gotta get my solder and stuff. Okay, now we gotta top off the transmission just a little bit. Probably gonna put about half a cord in. This is all that came out. Um, maybe I wouldn't even put a half cord in. Not sure. Make sure you're using Dexron, uh, yeah, six, Dexron six, and nothing else. No Dexron six equivalent or anything like that. Transmission fluids are very, Specialized for their transmissions. You want to use the OEM stuff and go to a dealer. Oh goodness, it's the uh, celebration. Anyways, go to the dealer, get yourself some of the real stuff. I believe the fill hole is right there. I'm not sure where the dipstick is though. Gonna have to look for that. Well, some of you who uh, already know this car may be laughing at me now because I've had to realize that there is no transmission dipstick, which is quite unfortunate. It really, uh, really sends the message to the customer that they're not supposed to be touching their own cars. 
because this is a perfect example, you know. The car, this car's been leaking transmission fluid. I changed the lines out myself, did it right, and uh, I don't know what to fill it. I don't know how much to put in there. <laughs> I don't know how long it's been leaking. I don't know how much is missing. So I guess I'm just going to guess like anyone else would. So I'm probably going to put in about half a quart, maybe, maybe even not that much. I really don't want to overfill it. And it's been shifting perfectly up to this point. Let me get that fluid in there and we'll start it up. Shift it through the gears, make sure it's not spewing fluid everywhere. Well, it all looks good so far. I'm gonna spin it through the gears a few times, take it for a test drive, make sure there's no fluid loss. And if everything's good and I don't think of anything else, uh, thanks for watching. You'd be good to go.